Good morning. You're listening to Central Wisconsin's 24-hour information station, AM 1320 WFHR. It's time now for the Morning Magazine, brought to you by Comfort Air Heating, Cooling, Plumbing. Welcome, everyone, to Morning Magazine for this September 22nd, 2021, 10.07 on the clock. And you have your host, James J. Mayloff. At 10.30 today, we're going to speak with our friends from the ODC. We have Tanya and Nicole joining us then. Right now in studio, we have not only our good friends from Wisconsin Rabbits Community Media. Good morning to Kev and our friends over there. I want to say a good morning to Wood County Board Chairman Lance Plimmel. Good morning, sir. Good morning, James. Great to be here. Good to have you with us, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And it's always good to come in the studio, and it's especially great great when the sun's shining, the weather's perfect. Yeah. Uh, things in central Wisconsin looking pretty good today. Not, not a bad, uh, uh, you know, uh, beginning of fall day here, you know? It's the way to start. <laughs> um, speaking of starting, uh, Lance, uh, during our pregame there, you you had a great thing that you wanted to bring up. And I, I, I love, one of the things I love about talking with you is I, I always feel like we get to talk about these fringe things that we don't necessarily get to talk much about. But you and I, we end up taking time with. And we wanted to talk about Crime Stoppers today. Yeah, a number of years ago, and, and I really don't remember how many, probably 20 years ago, we started a Crime Stoppers program in Wood County, and, and I was actually part of that uh, original group. And we have a board of directors that runs that Crime Stoppers program. Uh, we're extremely well-funded. Uh, we do that through a number of areas. But right now, we're looking for some new board members. And part of that is because board members, over time, term out. And we've just had a, a turnover here recently. Uh, the commitment is about an hour to two hours tops a month. Uh, we meet, like I said, we meet monthly. We typically meet in Pittsville, middle of the county. So no matter where you're listening at, like I said, most meetings run about an hour to, you know, to two hours, absolutely max. That's about the only commitment other than, you know, an interest in, in trying to, you know, help the community, help with maybe a little bit better uh, policing. Uh, you know, you're not out there in a squad car or, <laughs> or, or assisting law enforcement, but you do get to know some of them. Uh, we provide an extremely valuable service to those law enforcement agencies. We have uh, we've helped solve a number of crimes through the tips that we get. Those tips are anonymous. Uh, so, you know, we don't know, obviously, where those are coming in from. You won't meet those people, but you will talk to law enforcement. Uh, and it, it gives you a little bit of insight into that. So if you have any interest uh, in being a member of the Wood County Crime Stoppers Board of Directors, um, I'm going to give you this number. It's my it's my personal number. You mm. might remember this. It's 421 mm. 4001. That's pretty easy to remember. 421 4001. Uh, or you can look on the Wood County website uh, under the county board and you will also find my name there. So uh, if anybody has any interest, I'd really appreciate that. We, uh, we're taking applications for those positions right now and we're going to make some decisions in the next month or two. So any interest, holler at us. And then along with that, I drop, we have a, uh, our annual fundraiser where we make the most money is an event that we have at the, uh, at the high school at the Performing Arts Center. Mm. Uh, this year it's on October 28th, and we're bringing in the Britons, which is one of the best Beatles cover bands uh, in the country. They're fantastic. Yeah, You've they're never good. seen them. And over the next uh, several days or whatever, uh, James is going to give some tickets away. Yeah. So you don't have to apply to be a board member to get tickets. That's going to be a separate <laughs> deal. But we wanted to put this kind of at the forefront and in your mind uh, as you're going forward. So thanks, James. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for bringing the tickets to us. We love giving things away around here. Um, and, and, and I appreciate you bringing this subject up. Because I think, uh, you know, especially Crime Stoppers has been around for a while now. And, and however many years it's been, in most areas, they've, they've got a commercial. They've got a, something where you've seen the logo. You've seen some of it. But uh, somebody that's an actual board member and everything can tell us a little bit more where what does Crime Stoppers do technically, what it technically is. Well, the general function is, I mean, we're an organization where we set up different lines of communication where people can have, you know, anonymous tips that help us solve crimes. And it's amazing how many of those we get. Now, I'm going to be clear. There's some instances where you really need to call 911, not to call the crime stoppers number. Yeah. Uh, but we, you know, help solve those crimes within the community. And then we also have a quick 50 program within the schools, which has been really instrumental in helping remove some of the drugs and alcohol from the school itself. Mm -hmm. So it's been a great program. Like I said, we've been in existence for a long time here. We're part of the state and national organization. Uh, and you really truly are if you, if you send a tip in anonymous. I mean, even as a board member, I have no idea uh, who does those, those, right. you know, those uh, awards or rewards mm -hmm. uh, that come with those tips. And, and those, those amounts are decided by the board of directors. Uh, those get administered generally through a, a local bank where you get a tip number, you come mm -hmm. in, you just pick up an envelope. Uh, mm -hmm. So nobody knows who you are. So it's, it's been a great program. It's been instrumental uh, in, in solving a number of, I call high level crimes, but it's also been uh, extremely helpful in, 
in combating some of the drug issues we've had with some of the dealers and some of the others in the community. If I if I've gotten this right too, from what I've read, uh, just reading up on it a little bit and everything, they also help with missing people and missing children and that. Like as as far as tips go, it isn't just crime centric. It is certainly that is the first one, but that's also in there too, along with that. Yes. I mean, you know, we work on on all of those types of crimes, you know, anything that's really a crime. Now, like I said, the one thing we don't want you to do is if you see a crime in process, don't call the tip line. Yeah. Call the, uh, you know, call the dispatch center, yes. call 911. Uh, the, the tip is usually something where you are you are aware of something that occurred. If it's occurring, you know, I, I'm going to be ridiculous to make a point. But I mean, if you see an assault going on, Crime Stoppers isn't the place to yeah, call yeah. Uh, the dispatch center is. But it's been extremely uh, helpful within the community. I think all law enforcement agencies would agree with that. A number of the law enforcement agencies participate in those meetings that we have on a monthly basis. And I don't think you would regret any time you spent, and it's not a great time commitment. So look forward to hopefully uh, this show. Uh, mm-hmm. getting that information out and that we have some additional applicants who'd be interested. You mentioned that being a board member, it does not a big time restrict or anything, but you also uh, kind of gave some behind the curtain kind of information there that I don't think most people know as far as the, when, when these uh, cash rewards are set, the, who sets that number and those sorts of things. So the responsibility of being on this board, uh, while it isn't a big time restrict, you you have some good things that you can be a part of, some things that really can make a big difference in not only your community, but your state. There, yeah, there is. And, you know, I said, like, the commitment's minimal. And then there are events, like, you know, the, the show we have coming up at the PAC, uh, where if you want to volunteer and you want to, you know, hand out some of the swag that we have, you know, generally for kids mm-hmm. uh, at the door, uh, you know, that's always helpful. Occasionally we are at an event, uh, you know, where we make a presentation as to what we do. Yeah. Uh, that might be somewhere else. But those are not requirements. Those are people typically that have served for a while that are comfortable with the program. Might be at the fair. Uh, you know, sitting at a booth with the sheriff's department, handing out some of our information. Uh, it's been a great program. Uh, it's been extremely beneficial. Uh, we'd like it to continue. And like you said, you see commercials, you see reenactments of crimes on some of the stations. And, uh, and, and we've been really lucky and we've had a great relationship with not only our sheriff's department, but all the law enforcement agency. It's, it's Wood County Crime Stoppers, but it's not the Wood County Sheriff's Department Crime Stoppers. Yes, right. Um, mm-hmm. It, that's an important note to make, I think. Um, now, as far as restrictions, uh, like people that can't be on the board, is there is there any types of people that can't be on the board or, or age restrict? Like you have to be 18 to be able to like that yeah, sort of I, thing? I think, you know, we'd like you to be 21 years of age. We'd like that. Um, you know, there are certain uh, felony convictions that would probably preclude you in the uh, – you know, when we do the background checks and some of the right. other stuff that might cause some concern. Uh, you know, the one thing we don't want uh, is somebody on the board who's g- going to tip off the criminal, mm. you know, because right. there's right. a lot of criminal activity, sure. you know, in the background. But but generally speaking, no, it's, you know, it's just a, a general background check. Typically, the applicants are known by somebody who's on the board already, uh, you know, who kind of verifies their uh, contributions to the community all along. But again, g- great organization. We've had some tremendous, you know, board members who have over time termed out. Some of these people have served, you know, 12, 15 years uh, Mm -hmm. before they step aside. And and those board members, to some respect, become board members emeritus. You know, we can always rely on them Mm -hmm. uh, when we need some help or additional, uh, you know, people to staff some event. You mentioned that um, being on the board, you'll work with law enforcement. And it seems that to me that also seems like a, a great thing, not only for the board members, but for the law enforcement agents as well. Well, you get to meet those people in the community. You know, at least you'll get mm-hmm. to know who they are. You know, law enforcement comes to the meeting. They they present uh, tips, crimes that occurred within their jurisdiction generally. But but just getting to know those people. And, you know, and that morphs into the community policing, yes. uh, you know, that I talk about. I, you know, I love to see our sheriff's deputies. I love to see those police officers within the, the city. Uh, or the small municipalities out out in the community, you know, if you get to know the people who you police, you tend to have their assistance and their help. So, uh, the more we can get our our sheriff's department officers out there, the more we can get those local police officers out within the community, the more beneficial it is. So every opportunity to meet those people helps. Every time you see adults, uh, for adults interacting with police in a positive way, kids are seeing that, and, and it's building that bridge a stronger too. I uh, wanted to mention that the Wood County Crime Stoppers, uh, they have a website, woodcountycrimestoppers.com. They also have a phone number, one 325 stop That's one 
seven three two five stop. They also have an app. I didn't know of the app. They have part. an app. We have text to tip. Yeah. There's all kinds of ways to get it. So it's pretty good. It. I'm glad James pulled that up while we're sitting here and he's facing the other way, but he's got the website up. But that's the best way to access the information. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's what you. Hey, why don't you sit on this side of the table and I'll go over there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <I> would. <laughs> uh, sometimes, Lance, I feel like we do do that. Um, so it is, as far as that goes, where do you want to go with the conversation next? Now, that probably wraps that up. And then I know the next question you asked me, so what's going on in the county? Yep. Uh, you know, the big issue right now that we're dealing with, I think, all across the state is redistricting. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's big. You know, as mm-hmm. we move into the next uh, election cycle, uh, we received the census information from the federal government. I don't know. It's probably at least 90 days late. Mm. Uh, and you're expected to have this done in a timely fashion, yet they, they were exceptionally late which compressed the timeline to get this done. Uh, The legislature, uh, both houses of the legislature were moving forward with uh, a law that would have allowed us to delay that process until at least the next statewide elections, you know, federal elections, which would have worked just fine. The governor vetoed that and said, get it done. So uh, timeframes were compressed. Mm. We have to have this all wrapped up basically by our November county board meeting. So the county we actually scheduled public hearings and meetings ahead of actually having the data. We scheduled the meetings knowing that the data eventually would be available. We, we were lucky to have that in time. Uh, the county from their end had the original uh, maps drawn. We had the public hearing. Uh, the other day at our county board meeting, yesterday at our county board meeting mm-hmm. actually, uh, the resolution passed uh, establishing the county board districts. Uh, the information now goes to the municipalities. And that's where I my assumption is the bottleneck will occur. Uh, not even in Wood County as much as some of the, even the smaller counties and communities up north, because these town and municipal clerks have to crunch all this information. They have to get their wards together. Mm-hmm. Then that information eventually gets back to the county, uh, where we, again, you know, verify through kind of a final process. That information goes to the state. And then that's usually where you hear about fair elections and gerrymandering. Mm. Not a lot of that going on at the local level. Sure. And in Wood County, our population changed in the neighborhood of 500 people countywide, Mm -hmm. you know, in the last 10 years. So there weren't a lot of adjustments uh, to our maps. There was a a slight exodus of people from that middle of the county, you know, Mm. that line that runs kind of, you know, southwest to northeast. Uh, for those of you who never really looked at maps, about a third of the populations in the Wisconsin Rapids area, mm-hmm. a third of the populations in Marshfield, in the other corner of the county, and the the that last third runs down the middle of the county, you know, kind of you know southwest to northeast, and uh, that area took a little bit of a hit. So, you know, that took a little bit of boundary rearrangement uh, on the fringes of those districts. But for the for the greatest part, we're not dealing with where we had. 20, 30,000 people moving into the county. Right. We had to have a lot of changes. So uh, when it, the next election that comes up, probably not going to have a different location for where you're, you usually go, those Probably sorts of not. I mean, we don't want to assume anything. Yeah. I'm just saying probably. probably not, not, not hammering you down right. to anything But here, you but. might. And you know what's unique with this is a number of years ago, the software came out and the ability you know, to use it, you know, computer programming to do some of these districts, which mm-hmm. is much easier than when we used to sit on the courthouse floor with cut out pieces of paper, yeah. you know, generally trying to figure out where these boundaries sure. go. Uh, and, and that said, you try to have, well, first of all, you can't have a deviation of more than 10%. And our, our deviation in the county average is about 2.9. So we're, okay. we are exceptional in that respect. And then you try to take into considerations uh, communities, uh, areas of interest, school districts, all of those things, geographic Boundaries, you know, it's it's better typically if you have an entire district on, let's say, one side of the river if there's not a bridge for 20 miles. Sure. So all that gets taken into account, and we came up with, I think, our, like I said, our deviation was, I wanted to say like 2.89% or something like that. So well within the standards, uh, very similar to last one. And as James alluded to, there's going to be very, very few changes as to where you voted, unless your municipality changes, right. you know, a, award that you're in or something. So was there anything noteworthy out of this that you noticed? Any any changes at all uh, that, that happened from N- this? Nothing or? real noteworthy. Nothing, nothing like real. I said, the center of the county, the biggest part is, we, you know, we have to have this done because if you're running in one of those spring elections, one of those April elections, right. uh, these wards, these boundaries have to be set because people have to take out nomination papers and those nomination papers come out in December. So this has to get done relatively quickly. Yeah. And a lot of the... Uh, the small towns, for instance, don't have some of that programming availability. Uh, they meet infrequently to some yeah. extent. Yeah. Uh, and and this is not our county, but I have called other 
uh, counties. I've called town clerks in other counties where they tell me, I only check the voicemail once a week. You know, they come in. You think of those small town halls, yeah, yeah. you know, out in the countryside. and uh, Those delays happen. So one of the things that I, we are extremely lucky in Wood County, we have a county clerk who is, I think, recognized as one of the best in the state. Agreed. And, and Trent Miner uh, takes the time to work with all those municipalities. He was at the Towns Association meeting this past Friday. Uh, they offered our assistance and our help through through he and our planning and zoning office to, to provide any assistance that we can. And I know those municipal clerks, along with any help provided by Trent Minor, our county clerk, will will get this done. Yeah. I'm glad you bring up the smaller towns and areas in that, uh, too, because uh, to me, when it comes to doing this stuff, I always try to think of the people that we the unsung heroes, the people that are doing the work that we don't even know is being done or that needs to be done. And there, there's a lot of layers to something like this. And I I don't think a lot of us really take the time to kind of consider that, to think of those things. What brought it like to light to me was the pandemic and our voting uh, this year and how how amazing it is that what we pulled off, we pulled off a major election. <laughs> we, we our, our people out there, our volunteers, the people counting these things, the people working on the ballot boxes and all these different things. I mean, they work their tails off for us. And those are a lot of people that we don't know their names. We don't know who they are, may never know. But really appreciate that work. Got me thinking about people like this, the survey takers, the people that are out there trying to get these lines right and that. There's a lot more work involved in it than I think uh, I even realized even understanding the subject. You know, this is amazing. And I, I actually made a speech to this effect, I don't know, a long a long time ago to the Counties Association. Mm -hmm. But but it's exactly along those lines. It, it was one of those nights I my children were much, much smaller. Uh, my wife had finished work and we were going to drive to Florida. And we left at about probably seven at night. It's dark. It's in, you know, probably March. It was spring break, I think. It's dark out and we're driving through the countryside. And like usual, you know, everybody in the car was asleep except me by of course. eight o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm driving through the countryside. And as I'm driving along these highways, you know, I'm looking in the distance and I'm seeing these lights, these little communities. And, you know, and there's little communities everywhere. And I'm thinking there's people in every one of those, you know, and I'm not making this up. that do exactly what I do. Mm -hmm. And I said, and some of them have done it for 10, 20, 30, 40 years in, in, Generally, I'll call it a thankless position, Yes, but they run those small municipalities. Mm -hmm. They provide those services. And I'm thinking, and what really struck me is I'll never know who any of those people are. Mm -hmm. I'll never meet them. They do the jobs. And I'm going, you know, I was thinking back to like myself or some of the people I know in our own county where, you know, you've held public office for quite some time. And even in our own county, I have people that approach me all the time that think I'm the mayor, for instance, and, <laughs> right, you know, right. and I've never served in city government in any way whatsoever. Uh, so you're driving along, you're thinking, you know, unless you're the president of the United States at some point, the, the, I think the, the catchphrase or the, the line from the speech I made was five years from now or 20 miles from where I sit, nobody will ever know who I am. Right. And, and that's the unique part. And, and it, that's not unique to myself or our current County board or mm. those people who serve currently. But that's all the people pass. I mean, how many of you listening right now can tell me who the vice president was two terms ago? Yeah. Or or who the two U.S. senators were, you know, prior to, let's say, Ron Johnson and Tammy Baldwin. Mm -hmm. And I ask people all the time, I go, name our, our federal, you know, representatives, you know, members of the House of Representatives. And usually they can name one. We just did a survey the other day that most Americans can't name the three branches of government. government. I mean, yeah, so, those, right. those, yeah, those questions are really tough. Yeah. You know, and that's the part that amazes me is there's, you know, especially in these, uh, the smaller communities. In your own community, uh, you might know who that town chairman is. Uh, you probably can't name the last one. And yet that government doesn't run those services don't get provided. Your roads don't get fixed. Your fire department doesn't run mm -hmm. uh, unless you have all these people who, for the most part, are volunteers. Mm -hmm. I mean, every one of them. I mean, they might be paid a small stipend, but I can tell you the people I work with, they spend dozens, if not hundreds of hours uh, in a month sometimes uh, just dealing with the issues and the problems. And and, and they rarely get thanked, yes. uh, you know, like yes. I said. So, you know, it's interesting. And I've always said that uh, it ought to be a requirement almost that everybody has to serve at some point, at some level, somewhere. Yeah. Uh, even if it's on one of those, uh, you know, committees, ancillary committees. Sometimes I have the opportunity to appoint citizen members. And I have a few citizens that approach me all the time and say, if you have a slot, uh, I'd really be interested. And I, I always appreciate when those people call me, text me, email me, yeah. you know, whatever. 
uh, to show that interest because we certainly want to engage as many as we can. It's one of the things we've seen in a, an abundance of in the last year and a half of people wanting to do good, people wanting to affect their neighborhood and, and, and put some of the good into the into the universe and everything. And uh, kind of coming back, making this full circle, that's where being on the board of the Wood County Crime Stoppers, these kind of things come into play. So many people are, you know, I want to do something good for my community, but I don't have a lot of time or I don't have a lot of money or or I'm not a, you know, I don't have a skill set that necessarily I can go into this field and add to it. What can I do? Everybody could be on a board. Heck, I'm even on a board. Uh, you know, I mean, I, anybody could do that. And and all it takes is having a heart. It just take, you know, a pair of ears to listen and a good heart and you can be make a good impact on these kind of things. Yeah, I had somebody the other day who was a little upset at me because they, and the take was, they said, because you never get mad. And and I do. <laughs> so I, I imagine I might, you do. I might I not express it, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, my response to them was, well, that doesn't really help. Right. Uh, so, you know, sometimes you, you keep your mouth shut, you listen, uh, and you try to figure out how you're going to solve the problem. You try to sit down with those people and, and figure out how you get past those hurdles. But generally speaking, and, and you just touched on it, no matter what side of the aisle you sit on, yeah. uh, no matter what you do, I, I think generally speaking, and this does not include everybody. I mean, there are some people that want to just, I, I think, destroy oh, you sure. know, certain aspects of society. Yeah, you're but always... generally speaking, uh, everybody wants the community to be better. They have a different idea of how it gets there. And so I try never to summarily dismiss the other idea. You try to sit down and go, all right, why didn't I think of that? Is that a better idea? Yeah. Is there a reason it doesn't work? What are they seeing that what I'm not? Seeing, yeah, what know? are they seeing that I'm not? So I yeah. always tell you, know, my favorite people typically in a meeting are mm -hmm. the one that asked me the question I can't answer. Mm -hmm. And then even maybe more so the person who asked the question I didn't even think about asking. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, sometimes I'm yeah. sitting in the meeting going, I hope they don't ask that. I can't answer it. <laughs> and then somebody <laughs> asks a question that I didn't even think about. Sure. And and oftentimes, you know, as we as we put a whiteboard on the wall and we go, you know, what must we do and what won't we do? It's amazing how often those two change positions and what we must do moves to, yeah, maybe not. And what we'll never do ends up being exactly what we did. Yeah. Um, Lance, one more time, would you mind giving your number for people that they can, if they are interested in learning more or maybe being on the um, Crime Stoppers, Wood County Crime Stoppers board? Sure. How can they find you? Uh, again, you can, you can certainly find this on the Wood County website, you know, under my name. If you look me up there under, you know, Wood County, you'll find my number. But my number's a real easy one. It's a 715 area code. It's 421 Four thousand one four zero zero one. So if you have interest, give me a holler. Yeah. Uh, again, the website is woodcountycrimestoppers.com. And if you see something and need to cut, uh, get a hold of them, it's one eight seven seven three two five stop one eight seven seven three two five stop. Again, there is an app you can download as well. And keep listening throughout the week here because uh, Lance gave us some tickets to give away. So we're, we're mm -hmm. going to give these tickets away, and when we're doing that, we'll give you those numbers again about Wood County Tri Crime Stoppers. Thanks again for that, Lance. You betcha. A big thank you to Kevin, our great friends over at Wisconsin Rabbits Community. Media. Love you guys. Appreciate you. And always good to talk to you, Lance. Thanks, James. Appreciate keep, it. Uh, keep up the great work in the community. Stay safe and strong out there. We'll talk next month. Sounds good. Look forward to it. Coming up, we've got our friends from the ODC right here on Morning Magazine, AM 1320. You're listening to WFHR.